Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Take a Peek episode where this week we take a peek at Bridge Project, a series I just finished. Bridge Project is a building simulation puzzle game where you are given a, a very few amount of resources and you are told to build a bridge to fit the scenario. Sometimes it feels like you have too many resources, sometimes it's just enough, and sometimes it really becomes quite the issue to come up with the best bridge design with what you've been given and make it actually work. The game is developed by Halicom Media Group. And overall, it's $20 on Steam. It has a great deal of content. I'm talking 48 bridges, 48 scenarios, 48 puzzles. And overall, this game took me several hours to complete. Uh, 17 episodes, each going about half an hour long. It was a decently long game, but not, not too long. Not too long. I'm definitely happy that it's over. And I don't know what that really says about the game. I mean, that, that's up for your own interpretation. So in the options here, when, when you start up the game, basically it, it just says, uh, do you want to run in windowed or not? And what your resolution wants to be. It comes up with a separate window for that stuff. But if you want to go into further detail, uh, there's lots of different stuff you can do. Uh, there is a create maps option for example and you can go to the steam workshop you can create a scenario where another person has to build a bridge with a certain amount of resources you get an achievement for this actually and uh, there are a ton of maps on the, uh, the workshop page so if you actually if you're if you want to play more of the same game the workshop supports it all that doesn't mean it necessarily uh, is good. It doesn't mean the bridges on there are good because some people just don't bother. They they don't bother to create a good map. They just do it for the achievements. So you have to be careful when you look around at maps in the workshop to buy. Um, but if you want to create a challenge for yourself, for your friends, this is a great way to continue playing the game after you've been through all 48 maps. Granted, the 48 maps will be very, very challenging to figure out how to get through. Pretty straightforward in terms of just the basic graphics they offer. It's very straightforward. It's fast, medium, or best. Uh, with vegetation is none, medium, or best. And then just volume and grid. Whether or not you see this green grid line. It's really just kind of very basic, very, very basic option system, but it works fairly well. Uh, so we go ahead and continue here. We go into the bridge that I designed that was the very last bridge in the series. And let me kind of show you how this works. So down here you have your resources. In this case, suspension cable, iron, cables, and steel. You, you can see there's a, a number underneath in parentheses. This is how many meters of that resource you have left. So in this case, I have 313 meters of iron, but 1,500 meters of cables. If I run out of resources, then I don't have anything else to use. And I can't use that anymore. The end goal is to create the very best... Whoop, that was weird. The end goal is to create the very best bridge, a bridge that works at the cheapest price possible. That means using the fewest resources possible. A bridge like this is very minimalistic and it works very well. It holds the whole thing together. Uh, another almost unseen material down here is the roadway. As you can see, you have to have a roadway. It, you just have to have that. Uh, so if you go into your building options, you have the auto roadway capability. So we disable that. And all of a sudden, there you go, you can see the roadway. It's just there, and it does it automatically. You can enable, disable that, and same thing with crossbars. Now, for those of you that don't know what crossbars are, let me zoom in for you. Look underneath here. 
And you can see underneath this bridge, there's this little X right here. Those are crossbars. Underneath all the roadway, there are these X's. Crossbars add some more structural stability to the bridge and really just make it uh, that much sturdier. Do be careful when placing in, in crossbars, however, as weight is a consideration. Too much weight, the bridge won't be able to hold it up. It'll just fold right in the middle or in any weak spot that it finds. Too little weight, and it won't be able to have a rigid structure and hold up some of the heavier objects, like a train or a tank. Creating a, a, a good balance between using crossbars and support structures is absolutely vital if you want to get anywhere in this game. For the rest of the inter user interface, it's pretty much just like a button. So this is your select button. If you want to select a whole bunch of stuff, you do that. Otherwise, normally, you can't do that. If I just try and do that, it works because I've selected the select button. But if I, now I try, you see, it's like it's trying to build the bridge. Because I can't actually do that anymore without getting the select button. Your undo button, right there, pretty straightforward. You can center the camera, it puts it back to the default position. You can also look at other camera types. You can have an auto focus, so it follows the vehicles as they go across the bridge. Uh, and also focuses on the really key points of what's happening in your bridge. So if something's breaking, the camera will go there. And then of course you can show the camera path and change your own, uh, change your own pathing for the camera. So if you want to make a cinematic, for example, uh, the presentation mode would be very helpful for that. Of course, basic info about your bridge. Um, that was very loud, and I forgot to turn that off, and I do apologize. Except I can't. God dang it. I do apologize about that. Uh, but you go into info, it gives you basic info about your bridge. Uh, how many pieces it has, how much of whatever you're using. Uh, what is going to be tested on the bridge. And then what the end cost is, as well as your actual budget. Again, you can see I'm at 6.6 million pounds, whereas the actual budget is 10.2 million pounds. So I'm way under budget with this current design. You can see world records. Uh, however, the world records have mostly been removed. People were exploiting the game. They were cheating their way through the game. And so the developers removed the world records because they were not indicative of actual bridges, of real people's records. Again, you can, add, you can change your options anytime right in here, and then just go right back to the main menu, save, load, and restart. Of course, you can take a screenshot, uh, the help function, and then moving the camera around directly if you, if you wish. Of course, very last part, and the very most interesting part to the entire thing is testing the bridge. So you can see already, I've turned on the stress here. You can show joint, total, or not at all. I've turned on all the stress here, so you can see what's happening on the bridge. And you can see right away, most of the bridge is red. So obviously red is bad. Purple, or pink, whichever color you want to call that, I think it's more pink, uh, that is even worse. It means those joints are holding a great deal of weight. They're very, very stressed out. If a joint or a piece of the bridge becomes too stressed out, then it'll break, it'll pop off, like you've seen here, with a little bit of iron down here, a little bit of iron over here, some of the steels popped off over here and over here, and it might just fall apart. See how the entire bridge just failed. It just, it couldn't hold up, and it failed. It just falls into the deep river below. Everything just keeps breaking, it just it can't hold up anymore. The suspension cable snapped in two. 
the whole thing is just gone to crap. The bridge didn't work. But if I run it again, this, it creates one of the most annoying aspects of this game. The bad physics engine. The game is fun. The game has great puzzle solving capabilities. But the physics engine in this game is terrible. Absolutely horrible. I hit run simulate the bridge. And you guys saw it completely and utterly fail from step one. I run it again for the second one. You can see nothing really is falling off the bridge at this point. Everything's just kind of working. No metals falling off. And then boom, right there. Suddenly it broke in a completely different area. And this is gone. That's completely gone. And, and why, for example, why this side and not this side? The sides are completely identical. So why did this side fail? I don't know. It, it failed right here, right at that joint, it just snapped. So that right there is actually one of my greatest issues with the game as it stands. It just doesn't have a good physics engine. It's completely inconsistent. You know, at least with how... how real bridge simulation you know, architecture simulation programs work, it's consistent. It knows that this is how the forces are going to act on it. And you can change it a little bit here and there to see if you can actually uh, see how it adapts to different situations. But if you say this is the situation, then that is the situation. In Bridge Project, you don't have a situation, you have Pray that it works. You can see immediately it just starts failing and parts are immediately falling off this time. If we start it again, test it again. It works. Why? Why didn't a whole bunch of parts of the bridge just fall into the, into the river below this time? I honestly do not know. It really just comes down to the physics engine, and that that's my biggest gripe about the game. The physics engine just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. That being said, taking the, the physics engine aside, the game in and of itself is rather polished. There are very few bugs, very few exploits. It's definitely a fun game. And, if not frustrating, it is definitely fun. That, you have to, you have to understand that the game, is, it's supposed to be fun. It's not, it's supposed to be a game, not simulation software. And then this is definitely a game. If you want accurate bridge simulation software, don't get this game. This game is not accurate bridge simulation. But if you want a good challenge, if you like puzzle games, definitely pick this one up. It's it's a good architectural challenge. It may not be the puzzle game you're looking for, but when you sit down, you listen to the music, which is is good enough. It doesn't get too repetitive. It's a little enjoyable. You sit down, you listen to the music, and you just start building a bridge. It work. It, it just. It feels good, especially when you work on a bridge for a long time, for you know an hour or two, and then you come up with a, a design that works. No matter how absurd it may be, you come up with a design that works. That's probably when it feels the absolute best. And this game brings it often enough that. You can keep going and feel like you're making something happen, but at the same time, you're not... Uh, you're not having... You're not being discouraged. You can figure out the bridges 
in a reasonable amount of time. So when you beat a level, you can continue playing it, you can look at the world records which don't exist anymore, uh, and then of course you can go to the next level. So you see everything is, is finished, there are 20, er, <laughs> 48 maps across four areas, rural, city, canyons, and varied. All of them bring their own unique challenges, and all of them, most of them are fun puzzles. Some of them are really absurd. Some of them have you use different stuff, stuff that you don't see in the bridge like this, uh, such as creating a drawbridge for boats, or using concrete pillars to create some extra support, or wood. In fact, if we go to or eight. You go to a bridge like this, you can see the general solid design of what a bridge would look like. You now this bridge doesn't bend, it doesn't flex, it just holds fast. And for as much as I have gripes about the physics engine in this game, they did get one thing absolutely right. That is, if you go to your local bridges, you go find a river, you go find a bay where there is a bridge. And you, you don't know how to build a bridge, but you have a similar issue. Because you need to figure out how to build that bridge, you need to solve the puzzle. You go look at a bridge, and then you come into the game and replicate that bridge, it will work. That bridge will work. And for as much as I have gripes and issues with the physics engine about it being inconsistent, it does actually work as far as real bridge designs are concerned. This is a real bridge design. I have seen this bridge in the mountains over a river where I live. It's very strong, it holds together, and it works. The physics engine may not be perfect, but it still works. Like I said, it's not perfect. <laughs> bridge failed. Finish! You succeeded! That's another issue with the game. If you succeed and the bridge is going through its final stages of, hey, you finished the bridge, but it's actually starting to fail, you still win. That is a bug. That is definitely a bug in the game. But, that being said, overall the game is fairly solid. It does a good job of being a, a challenge, but not too challenging. And for the most part, it's, it's a good game. For the most part, it is a good game. It's not perfect, but it is good. So I would give the game a 7 out of 10 with the caveat that if you like puzzle games, and you like architecture, this would be a good game for you. If you just like puzzle games, there are better puzzle games out there. This is not a specific puzzle game. This is a building simulation puzzle game. It's not a hardcore puzzle game. It's not a pure puzzle game. It is a casual puzzle game where you can sit down for a couple hours on any given problem and try to solve it. Definitely a casual puzzle game. And I, and I don't mean casual in a bad way. The casuals can be taken in a very uh, negative connotation. I don't mean that at all. I mean that it's casual in the sense that it's very relaxed. Sit down, slow pace, and, and just, just think about it. Build whatever kind of bridge you want to build and call it good. So, like I said, it's 7 out of 10. It's it's good. It's not great. 
but it's definitely a game that's not for everybody. There are a, a, a multitude of similar titles to Bridge Project, such as Bridge Constructor, as one example. And they all pretty much do the exact same thing, and they all pretty much suffer from the exact same issues as a bad physics engine. Uh, overall, I, I choose Bridge Project as uh, one of the best in terms of the bridge building simulation, at least as far as I've played. It does a good job of what it needs to do, and that is to be a fun gaming experience. It does a good job of that. It is fun without being too overly serious. So that's going to be it for this episode, guys. As always, links are down below. It's $20 on Steam, which personally I think is too much. If you're going to pick up this game, pick it up for half off, 75% off, 90% off. Wait for a Steam sale to get this game because it's not worth $20 in my eyes. It is absolutely not worth $20. But, if you want to buy it right now for the full price, go to the link down below. It'll send you right to the Steam page. And then down below is also a playlist if you want to watch me solve all the puzzles in 17 episodes for 48 bridges. It was definitely a lot of fun and uh, very difficult. Very, very difficult. So guys, as always, thank you for watching. I will see you next time with another Take a Peek episode. DFTBA, thanks for watching.